back to my channel or if you are new to this channel, welcome. My name is Mary. Obviously, I got some friends in the background with me. I have my Rottweiler Capitan and my baby Boston Terrier girl, Ruka, in the back. I hope you guys are all doing well. In today's video, I want to um, blast you guys back to the past of when Capitan was a puppy. So unfortunately, I didn't start my YouTube channel until Capitan was like around two years old. So I didn't did not get like any footage really of him as a puppy, which I'm actually really bummed about. But I did recently just find some new photos of him when he was super, super young and with like some of his litter mates. Photos I've never shared on Instagram or on YouTube. So I decided I kind of wanted to like go through the process of Capitan as a puppy and how he is now. I want to also like go over some really important points about Rottweilers when they're puppies like Parvo and how important shots are training. There's and how puppy proofing the house. There's just a few things that I want to go over while also sharing some really adorable photos of him. He's so dirty right now too. I don't know if you guys can tell. You are so dirty, Kiki. Don't look at me right now. Anyways, before we get into this video, it would mean the world to me if you guys hit that subscribe button, notification bell, follow us on our IG because that is where I post the most. And um, yeah, I knew he was gonna get down there because Ruki likes to bug him. Let's uh, dive into the story of Capitan, why don't we? Have to start the story by letting you guys know that I actually was good friends with the breeder. She was a friend from high school, so it kind of went all full, full circle when it came to actually picking out Capitan. I remember the day she got Romy, which is Capitan's mom. Um, we went on a walk around the beach and I never knew that one day I'd actually have one of her puppies. So my friend has her his mom to this day. Her name is Romy. I think she's about eight years old and she is no longer breeding anymore. Um, hi, baby girl. You wanna say hi? Oh, this little sassy girl. We gotta do an update video on her. Mama loves you, but this video is about Kiki. Oh yeah. She uh, thinks she's a Rottweiler. No growling at your mama. Tin's mom is still around, just no longer breeding. She had, um, I think two litters her whole life. One being a litter of nine. And then Capitan was actually a litter of 12. So she had some big puppies, a big group of puppies, I would say. Um, I don't know who Capitan's father is. I actually was going through some paperwork, which my breeder had sent to me. Capitan, you want to know what your dad's name is? Zuma. And he's in Jamal, California. So maybe we could look him up. He's registered. I'm sure we could do some more research if you really want to know who your father is, but who needs that? Captain's mom is uh, no longer breeding, but just living her good life. Romy delivered her 12 babies. I think it was within like two weeks I got to go over to the breeder's house and just look at the puppies. I didn't get to touch any of them. None of them like were collared yet. They all were just still nursing. Um, I know the day that they were born, my, the breeder did dock their tails and did do the dew claws, which I'm so happy she did do, do the dew claw because he plays so hard with his um, feet and he hates his nails getting cut anyway. So I can only imagine if he had a dew claw, the amount of times we'd be in the vet. But thank God she, he, she did do that. And I know some of you guys are always like questionable about docking the tail. Um, I think he has the absolute perfect dock tail. I know these days they are not doing, you're not going to see Rottweilers with as much dock tails anymore, but he uh, got his tail docked the day he was born. So I just wanted to clarify that. Um, so I think it was within like <clears throat> five weeks when I really got to pick him out and like know which one I was going to take home. And I would go over to my friend's house at least like every day to see Capitan. I was kind of probably being really annoying. So it was pretty cool that I already had the connection with him and we already pre-planned his name. Uh, my husband had a Rottweiler back growing up named El Capitan 
and uh, we just wanted to keep on the legacy. So we already knew what his name was going to be, and we already picked him out. He was the green collar. So I think it was around eight weeks I got to bring him home. But this is a subject I really, really want to shine light on because I really haven't talked about it a lot on this channel is Parvo and puppies. So the other day I saw a <laughs> gorgeous little Rottweiler puppy girl walking along the beach. She was so small. And the first thing that crossed in my mind was, I bet you she's not fully vaccinated yet. And some people are just not aware of the risks that you're taking when you take out this fresh puppy. Just like Ruka, she hasn't yet to like go out to the public yet because she's not fully vaccinated. So once she does, that's when I can start puppy training and teaching her how to walk. So Parvo is something to be really taken seriously with, especially when you have a Rottweiler puppy. For some reason, they are way more prone to catching it. Parvo is a gastrointestinal disease. It actually can be deadly to some puppies. My, uh, the breeder made sure she stressed on it. She wrote like this whole thing down when taking home your puppy, but she really, really stressed on the fact that not taking your puppy out right away and waiting, you know, I think it's about three weeks. No, 16 weeks is when they're going to be finally done with all their shots. They have to do three different rounds. So Capitan got his first round before I took him home. We had to wait for the second. And then finally, when we got the third round was when we got the okay to start doing puppy training and walking and all that stuff. Uh, Parvo can be spread from like grass from dog to dog let's say uh it's very contagious and it sticks on surface areas as well so even if you're not even around dogs but in a grass enclosure that was been out in the public you don't know if a dog has t been on that grass that has parvo and your puppy can catch it and you wouldn't even know they have it until the last minute and it could end up not ending up well so i'm just i no, everybody gets super excited, especially when they get a puppy. They want to take them out right away and socialize them. But I just really stress that you wait till they're fully vaccinated. Don't risk it. <laughs> Obviously, parvo is a very serious, deadly disease. But I also want to stress on the fact of puppy proofing your house. Um, Rottweilers like to get into things. They chew things. Capitan was a year until I fully trusted him in the house. To let him roam around and do everything i've talked about it in my previous videos how i used to set him up in the hallway how i have her set up because i do not trust her around the house right now so puppy proofing is you know something you're gonna have to do for at least i think a year it was for capitan uh the breeder once i said like i said she wrote out a whole thing about parvo but she also stressed on the story that happened to one of the first litter mates um one of the first litter dogs went off to a family and I guess the family just wasn't really educated or didn't have a setup for the dog and just let the puppy free roam. Um, that day they had emptied out pills in their trash can, left the pup, the dog obviously went into the trash, they smelled some chicken in there, ended up eating the pills and the puppy ended up dying because he got into the pills and overdosed. I mean, there's just so many other things that could happen as well that you stress on puppy proofing your house. And I'm not saying like put him in crates all the time because Capitan never was in a crate. Uh, I bought a crate thinking I was going to do the whole crate training at night and I was just a sucker for him to come in my bed, which he still comes in my bed to this day. As you see, it doesn't bug me. It does bug some people, but crate training was never something I wanted to do, but I know some, if you don't have the room to trust your dog out, that is just another option as well. The question I get asked a lot was when did I neuter Capitan or if I did and did he change? So for a while, me and my husband were going back and forth whether or not we were going to do it or not because we didn't want his like dynamic to change. We didn't know exactly what was going to happen, um, but it was getting to a point when he was like a year old he was marking everything and so they say around a year and four months is the proper time to neuter your male and uh, but then there was also so many things saying that if you did neuter him it was bad it's just a personal choice if you aren't a responsible owner I say definitely get your animals fixed if you're not going to be washing them all the time but I am a really responsible owner so I always had the option of maybe not but he was marking everything. 
he wasn't mounting anything but he was marking like even people and honestly was over him peeing everywhere we would go into like i remember the liquor store one day and he was peeing on wine and i was just so embarrassed so uh we fixed him at a year and four months exactly and the day i picked him up he was so sad like every breath was a cry it was so heartbreaking but you know he healed up really well within a week i just definitely had to keep him sedated and in a little space so he wouldn't jump so the stitches wouldn't reopen or anything but after that he was fine and nothing has changed about him he is still the ultimate guard dog that he was before he was fixed maybe even a little bit more like i couldn't imagine how aggro he would be if he wasn't fixed but um that's just a personal choice and nothing changed everything's good so if you're deciding to do it, uh, I would suggest it. Just do your research about it. A question I constantly always did get asked to was, was Capitan very nippy as a puppy? And he, in the beginning, was until I would redirect him with bully sticks or some type of rawhide. I always suggest some natural rawhides. They're always going to be a little bit more pricier. The ones at Peco are dirt, so you would have to go to like a, a boutique for these like rawhides, but they're really good for teething and for when puppies are, you know, trying to be nippy. Like this one right now is so nippy. I never had to deal with that. So now I'm dealing with it, you guys. Uh, I got so lucky with this one that this one's definitely giving me a run for my money, but rawhides are always gonna be your best friend. Also, if they start like chewing up stuff, Capitan was never a chewer. He once was going to chew up his bed and I just bought the puppy sour spray and sprayed that on his bed and he never chewed it up ever again. So if you're having some puppy issues chewing, I know that sour spray usually works, but if that doesn't work, um, you can kick it up a notch and do like a hot sauce. Um, that's like the old school way of not getting dogs to chew on things was putting on some hot sauce, but I never tried that, but the sour spray worked out great and you could get that like on Amazon or even at Walmart. I do want to say that be aware that your first week of owning a puppy, it's not gonna be pleasant. Uh, you're not gonna sleep a lot and you might question yourself on why you got a dog, but just know that if you keep up the work with them, they, the process is gonna get better and you guys are gonna get into your own routine and you're gonna forget about the puppy days. But just know that everybody does go through the terrible puppy week because they do miss, uh, you know, their other litter mates and their moms. So they're just learning to adjust with you. So, uh, you know, just be patient. They will come around, I promise. I wanna dive into potty training because I know that could be hard for some people. I wish I had some more like experience for you guys, but for me, like I said, Capitan came from such a good breeder that he learned from his mom and other siblings not to go inside the house and to go outside in the dirt and paw at the door when he needed to. Um, that's just what his mom did and he learned from that. I think the guy had maybe about like five accidents throughout his whole life. So I was really blessed on that. Typically they just learn from their parents. Now that Capitan is a little bit older, he's definitely mellowed out a lot. He, you know, he does like to play with other dogs, but I don't feel like he necessarily likes other dogs. I mean, he loves to hang out with Sandy Cheeks and I do make sure he gets some socialization and he has Ruka now, but the guy just would rather play ball by himself in his backyard all day. He's really happy just being an independent child, but um, he's a really good boy and he still, you know, he does, don't get me wrong, has his burst of energies and we still need to go on walks and we need to, you know, get that mind stimulating to keep him happy, but other than that, my boy's been pretty mellow and doesn't get into any trouble and I have not one complaint about him. Uh, he's a lover, he's a sweetheart, he's the ultimate guard dog. So I hope you guys enjoyed, you know, me rambling about some serious topics about puppies and also just seeing some blasts from the past photos of Cappy because I really wanted to uh, show you guys how adorable he was because I didn't get to film any previously to my channel. So that's going to wrap it up for today's video. I hope you enjoyed seeing adorable photos of Cappy as a puppy and your puppy safe out there, you guys. Um, if you are new to my channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button.
follow us on all our socials. It'll be linked down below. And um, I'm going to do some more vlogs here soon. We got a lot of updates to tell you about this one. So I'll see you in the next one.